turn. So easy. All right. These guys, you have a, a cubing function and a line. So a cubing function, something like this, is going to go up. It could cross it twice, once. Um, so substitution is probably best here. You can't. You can't do anything with the next element. You can only do everything when the exponents are one. Okay, so substitution probably is the one way to do this. Unless you eliminate the y's and still you'd be stuck because you got an x cube. So I would use substitution. Don't forget to go back and find the other variables that you're missing. Okay, and yes, you could get answers like radicals. Let me move this down a little bit. You could get answers like radicals. If you give me your answer as radical 3 plus or minus, do I have a negative one? Plus or minus that answer, or 3, or no, radical 3 plus or minus that, you could do that too. It's just the plus or minus of that thing. Uh, this guy, I missed the top equation, but substitute whatever you like to do to it. And check the answers. You can't check these on your calculator. Lane? Um, on a test, are you going to tell us what it, like, which one of you is going to use whichever one of those guys? I don't know. I, but probably I'll leave it up to you. I don't usually tell you what to do. I don't like to, to say, use this, use that. Whichever one you like. Some kids are more comfortable with substitution. Some kids like elimination for everything. Okay, so we have a circle and a line. A circle and a line can cross once, it could be tangent to it, can cross twice, or doesn't cross at all. And we have a cubing function and a parabola. That could be a number of ways. Definitely on the circle, substitution. So this one, really the only thing you can do is substitute in. Same thing with you can't take the square root of two terms. I can't take the square root of this. Even though these are my perfect square factors, they're not the same factor. To take the square root of this, I would have to have this. Then you can do that. Because this is going to give me a middle term, not that. Okay, we're good with these? No. Okay. The last one. Okay. This one is like some kind of a little hyperbola. This is one of your inverse things. 
um, substitution. Yeah, you're going to have to substitute a fraction in there. Then get rid of your fraction. Yeah, you can end up with, that, with fractions in here. Key to this is leave everything as fractions. There's no three decimals in these because there's no way to check it if it's not an exact answer. So leave them in reduced fraction format. Row echelon format. Row echelon format says this. Uh, just in case you hear this again. It's like a stair step. Kind of like a stair step thing. And every leading coefficient is one. Do you have to know this? No. But if you hear this again, this is where this comes from. So it's called row echelon format. So if you notice it, it's kind of like a stair. Probably if I wrote it so that they ended up that way, you'd see it better. Like if I lined it up and put the y plus 3z, then the z equals, it would look better as a stair step. Each leading coefficient is 1. <coughs> That's what you're going to end up hearing a lot, is row echelon format. Not a big deal. It's just it's, that's what it looks like. Now this one is nice because we have a backwards approach to solve this. Just go backwards. Start with this guy, plug this in here. Now you can take this, plug in your 2, and solve for what? You really have to keep track of me when I do this because when I talk and I write, sometimes I don't write the things that I'm saying. And if I put the wrong thing in, we don't get the right answer. So somebody's got to make sure they keep track of me. So you've got your S, your Y, and your Z. You know that Z is 2, and now we know that Y is negative 1. Then just go backwards again. Take this guy and say S times 2 times a negative 1 plus 3 times 2. Makes sense, right? And we can solve for x. And x is equal to 1. Once you get your answers, leave them in some kind of a box for me, or like this, in order with the variables. You can use any variables. Just put your variables in alphabetical order. Like if it's mnp, put it mnp in order. So you can give it to me that way or this way. Now, if you put this in your matrix, let me just show you something. If you put this in your matrix, I'm sorry, it doesn't always cooperate. These are all different formats, right? But you have to go by the first, the, the, the largest format. So I have to go by three, three rows, one, two, three, four columns. So I have to say 3 by 4. I have to go by the largest one. I put all my coefficients in. So I've got 1, a negative 2, a 3, and a 9. Keep track of my calculator, too, because it doesn't always work that great. I don't get the 9. But, okay, so now, I'm missing the x. So what coefficient should I put in for x? Zero. You have to have this placeholder. Then your y is one, then a three, and a five. Then you're going to have a zero, and another zero, and a one, and a two. Okay, you have to go by the highest one, <coughs> and you have to use placeholders of zeros for coefficients. Put the, the coefficient would be zero. Anything times zero wipes it out. So then quit. Go back to your matrix. I think it's this side of the board. Go to edit. Go to math. Come up or down, whichever way you prefer. I'm going to try this one more time. Oh, 
put up. It's not going to work. Okay, you know what to do. My calculator is just not cooperative. I think it's just my board is old. Okay, so we're good with this one? All right. All right. Okay, now, what you want to do when you do this is make sure your variables are lined up. This is your elimination system. Now, sometimes we have one that's missing a variable. So if I can work with these two and eliminate this missing variable, then I'll have two equations with two variables. So a nice way to do this is always start by numbering your equations. The, the hardest part that I find, and trust me, this is the hardest part for me when I grade these. Keep this organized. Because number one, it is so hard for me to grade these, to try to figure out what equation to use, what you multiply by. Some kids will multiply and put the new equation and I don't know where it came from. And I have to go back and figure out where did I get this equation from? And if there's one mistake, I can't find the mistake because I don't know what you did. So try to keep it as organized as possible for you, too. Because if your answer is wrong, you have to go back and find your mistake. So take 1 and 3, and let's see if we can eliminate Z. Why can't I eliminate X from this? I mean, I like to eliminate X because it looks easier to eliminate. So why can't I eliminate X? It's in the second equation, and then I'll be stuck with an equation that has xy and one that has yz. And that doesn't do me any good, unless, unless you have a yz and you substitute out for y in terms of z, and you're still stuck with an x in there. So you've got to eliminate the same ones, and that's one of the biggest mistakes that everybody does. They just eliminate whatever's easiest. So if I want to eliminate the, the I need my coefficients to be the same, but opposite sign. Multiply good. The first one by a 5, and the second one by a negative 3. Could I have multiplied the top one by a negative 5 and the bottom one by 3? Yep, your choice. Be careful on the negative. So we're going to bring this guy down. We use 1 and 3. We're going to bring it down here, and we're going to say 5x times 10y. 15z equals 45. 6x plus 15y minus 15z equals 51. When you combine these, these z's better go away. So we get a negative x plus 5y equals negative 6. And I, I, when I do this, I call this a. You can call it whatever you like, but if you see me put some red things down there, it's usually because I labeled an A. If I combine two other ones, I label it B, and then I know when I'm going back to check. If it's in my second step, it's in my A's and B's, not my 1's and 2's. So whatever way you like to do this is fine for me. So now, you have this guy. You can pull this one in. So we've got a negative X plus 3Y equals a negative 4. It's nice on the board because I get to use different scales. So if I add these down, can I eliminate something? No. So what do I have to do? Multiply one of them by a negative one. So I'm choosing to multiply the top one by a negative one. So I'm going to write it down here. Now my x's will eliminate. And my y becomes negative 1. Let me make a little box over here. So now what? Now what do I do? Where should I substitute that into? What's a, the best equation to substitute that into? The second one. You don't want to substitute it into the one that you changed unless you have to. And sometimes you will have to put it into your one that you changed, the A or the B. But in this case, this one's already here. So I'm going to come up to this guy. If 
since I now know my, my why, I can find my x. So when I substitute this in, x is equal to 1. And now you can pick either 1 or 3 and substitute it into there. So substitute into the first one. x is 1 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3z equals 9 and z is equal to 2. So make sure you keep track of your answers this way or I'd like it this way if you can think to do that. And when you check this on the matrix, make sure that you say zero in here. This one is great to check on your matrix. If my calculator works better, I would do it. One plus, this is one plus two, this is three, get to six, divide by three, get to two. Good? Okay, now the tough one. And you probably remember doing these from Algebra 1. We have no room to write when it's so big. I want you to look this over and to see what you would like to eliminate. Any suggestions? You want to eliminate X? <coughs> okay, so let's label these one, two, three. Eliminate X from which one you want to start with? Well, one and three. Okay, so from one and three. write that down here. Don't forget to go all the way across. Like right here, this is probably one of the popular mistakes. Well, like one of my popular mistakes. So when you're going back to check, always check when you multiply something by a negative. Sometimes that negative gets lost. So I'm eliminating the x. So I'm going to call this x. So now what? Now which one do you want to do? What, what do we have to eliminate from the next step? Another x. Don't go and eliminate a different variable or you'll be stuck with two equations and three different variables. You can only solve for your variables for as many equations as you have. So one variable, one equation. Two variables, two equations. They have to be the same too. So which ones would you like to do? One and two. Works for me. But I have chosen two and three? Absolutely. So there's a number of ways to do this, guys. Okay, any suggestions? By negative two. Good, I need to eliminate x. So I'm going to bring this down here. Add these together. I'm going to get 5y minus 4z equals 0. This is my b. Aha, uh -huh, it's the same or what? Well, you're on the right track. You notice that this part and this part is the exact same, right? But if they're the exact same, could they be equal to two different 
numbers. So this is a no solution. So say I didn't see that. I would try to combine these. So I would do this. This is like yesterday's. And I would say, okay, I have to multiply by a negative 1. Or maybe I'll just multiply this by a negative 1. I'll bring this down. Oops, I eliminated the y, I eliminated the z, and I say, is 0 equal to 2? No, so there's no solution. If you noticed it up here, that the same equation cannot be equal to two different constants, no solution. You're going to get some that have no solution. You, I doubt you'll get some that have an all solution. <laughs> Not right now, but you'll, we'll do one similar.